Hi, I'm Noah Bombard, and here's what's happening in the ET Newsroom Monday, March 1st. Now, the biggest story since last week has been the aftermath of our storm from last week. The severity of this storm and the number of power outages it's caused has uh, caused a lot of people to think back to the ice storm of 2008. Now, most officials and residents are saying this isn't as bad as the ice storm as 2008, but certainly for those who've been without power for days, it certainly appears that way. Now, we do have updates on the website this morning. As of 5 a.m. this morning, uh, PSNH uh, said there were about 41,000 people left or 41,000 home, homes left without power. They anticipate that the majority of those 41,000 will have their power restored today. The remainder will be restored by midweek. Now, if you go online, we've actually had a number of stories this weekend that are very interesting to take a look at. Our own Bill Kirk actually did a video uh, talking with one of, the, uh, one of the officials. The big question in a lot of people's minds, why is it taking so long? Well, we actually take a look at that. Uh, one of the things that they have to do in a lot of these cases, you have to consider the fact they've got to clear the trees first that have fallen down. They've got to remove the old pole. They've got to put in a new pole, and then they've got to replace the wiring. Now, the process per pole takes about three hours, they say. Multiply that by the many, many poles that were damaged during this storm, and you get an idea for why it takes so long for power to be restored. As they say in the story, uh, they work on some of the major areas first, making sure hospitals and other uh, sanitary facilities have power. Then they move to the major arteries, uh, and then they move down the side streets and smaller areas. If you want to stay up to date on the progress, make sure to check out the website and our storm blog that we've been running with constant updates as to who has power, who doesn't, and what's happening. Now, if you have an interest in gaming in Massachusetts, you want to check online today. We've got a very interesting story about lobbyists who have been pushing for gaming. Now, this was a big issue a couple of years ago. It fizzled out. It's coming back. Some interesting facts. In 2008, there were about $800,000 being pumped into the state uh, to support the move toward allowing more gaming. 2009, last year, that number jumped to 2 million. Also, if you look at the number of firms that are lobbying uh, to promote gaming in the state, uh, went from 19 in 2006 to 36 in 2009. This is going to be a big issue in 2010. House Speaker Robert DeLeo says he'd like to see the legislature voting on a bill on this by spring. Just a reminder that all these stories and a lot more can be found at eagletribune.com right now.